The anime started with Teo Asano, a high school student, when he lost his entire family in a car crash. He was the only survivor, and as he sat at his family's funeral, he wondered how one realizes the true importance of something only after one loses it. He looks at his childhood friend Matsumi Yazakura, crying and questions himself if he ever bonded with someone or something precious to him wouldn't he just lose it? Suddenly the image of Matsumi dying scares him. She is the only real bond he has left and he can't bear the thought of losing her. As he struggles to hold back tears, Matsumi looks at him and realizes he's afraid. She holds his hand and assures him she isn't going anywhere. After the accident, Teo becomes distant from his classmates. He would often keep to himself and their mere presence would startle him. Even when they tried to invite him to a soccer practice match, a study group or karaoke after school, he would turn them down. Today is their 10th time trying to invite him to join them, and Teo has turned them down like a girl who is playing hard to get. His friends remind him that it has been over a month that they've ended up in the same class, but it is a shame they haven't hung out as old times. During this ordeal, one of the friends brings their attention to Teo, who has become a nervous wreck and is literally foaming at the mouth. He's seconds away from blacking out, which is an indication that his friends need to back off. They walk away, but still determined to get him to say yes, they decide to try again the next day. Teo feels bad for turning them down because he doesn't hate them or anything. In fact, he's happy they asked him, but he has his own reasons. Just then, Matsumi arrives and asks if he rejected his friends again. Surprisingly, Teo can easily talk to her without having panic attacks. Since Teo is always working, he doesn't have the time to prepare food for himself. So Matsumi often prepares his lunch and delivers it with a warning against leaving out his veggies. She laments Teo's situation and his unwillingness to observe social etiquette like any average mom would. Teo is quick to remind her that she shouldn't be talking like that since she too rejected a boy. Despite him being smart, good-looking and captain of the soccer team, Matsumi is quick to brush it off and advises him that he needs to move on or his parents watching from heaven will be sad. She opens the lunch and tries to feed him an egg roll, but before Teo can eat it, their teacher, Mr. Harukawa with his overzealous personality, snatches the bite and praises its taste, almost experiencing a footgasm. Matsumi looks annoyed and asks him why he's there when he was supposed to be on business for an overseas lecture. Harukawa smugly replies that he missed her food so much that he rescheduled and decided to come home early. Talk about overbearing, he doesn't stop there praising Matsumi's white hair streak and saying that he would want to rub his cheek against her. He only stops after Matsumi threatens to report him for harassment. Even then, he looks smug and turns to Teo and asks him to see him in his office after school, which makes Teo nervous, but Matsumi stays quiet. After school is over, Teo heads to the vice principal's office where he has a very awkward tea party with Harukawa, who doesn't understand the concept of personal space. He further creates a questionable image of himself when he shows Teo his collection of secret shorts of Matsumi on his phone. While he flaunts his favorite picture of Matsumi, Teo can't help but think what a pervert Harukawa is and how he should definitely report him. But Teo starts panicking when Harukawa starts showing him pictures of Matsumi from when she was little. It takes a few seconds to get through Teo's thick head. How did the teacher land up with Matsumi's childhood pictures? Harukawa declares that he has been protecting Matsumi from all the undesirable men. He mentions the third-year kid who recently confessed to Matsumi and how he graciously asked him to stay away from Matsumi and the kid agreed. And by graciously he means covering the kid's eyes so he doesn't recognize his teacher and beating the sheet out of him. Teo suddenly stiffens as he realizes what a dangerous man Harukawa is. As expected, Harukawa brings out his blade and points it at Teo just because he's envious of their friendship. Teo sweats profusely and realizes he can't move. He is scared that Matsumi might be in danger until he hears Harukawa refer to her as his kid sister. But before his brotherly love turns creepy and dangerous for Teo, a silver-haired woman dressed as a doll suddenly appears at the window and rescues Teo using blinding lights. When Teo opens his eyes, he finds several faces staring at him. Matsumi is first to greet him, but when he realizes he doesn't recognize the faces or the place, he almost loses it. Pulling himself far away from them, he asks who they are. Matsumi calmly explains that the people there are her siblings. The silver-haired woman who rescued Teo is Matsumi's elder sister, Futaba. She introduces her elder brother Shinzo, who is tech-savvy. Elder sister Shiana Pro Gamer, Cool Kingdo, a very shy but super smart Nanao and their guard dog Goliath, who honestly looks like a black cat. She reveals they are a family of spies. Now that she has told him the secret about her family, which she had to hide for more than 10 years, 
she feels relieved. However, Teo turns jittery because of information overload because who he thought was a family of green grocers who dealt with eggplants and radishes actually dealt with guns and intel. Teo doesn't believe a word Matsumi just said and thinking it is a prank, he picks up one of Shinzo's guns and air fires it, only to scare himself even more. As freelancer spies, their ratings are pretty good. Finally, they have their eldest brother Kaoichiro, who turns out to be Hirukawa. He is basically a star among spies and plays an important role in boosting their popularity. He may be a pervert, but in terms of combat power and intelligence, he's the best spy in their family. Teo, however, is confused and questions why was he then Kaoichiro's target. The family clarifies that they got a tip that Matsumi's life was in danger, someone was plotting to take her life. Futaba explains that during an incident years ago, Matsumi suffered a near-fatal injury because of Kaoichiro. The white hair streak Matsumi supports is the remnant of the stress from that accident. Ever since that day, Kaoichiro's guilt has made him obsessed over Matsumi to an abnormal degree, which explains why he changed his name and took a job at her school to keep vigilance on her, but his obsession is such that he interferes with everything from her daily life to her personal decisions. A Matsumi protecting monster who has been giving Teo a pass despite his hatred towards Teo, but now he has more than enough reason to eliminate Teo after he received the tip. Futaba apologizes to Teo about her idiot brother. Suddenly the alarm starts blaring indicating that Kaoichiro is home, the siblings assure Teo that he is safest with them and have set traps all the way from the entrance to the living room where they gathered. The siblings are prepared and are ready to give their moron of a brother a beat down, even though they have only a 30% chance of succeeding, a 42% chance of one of them needing 6 months of recovery, and a 25% chance of the house burning down. Seeing Teo hesitate, Futaba reveals the only way he can survive is by marrying Matsumi. According to the peace in the household treaty, no family member is allowed to harm the other family member. To marry they will just have to exchange the family's cherry blossom ring which every family member wears. The ring is double banded and the moment one gives the half to their spouse their marriage becomes official. This way they can save Teo from Kaoichiro's wrath, and it might serve as an opportunity for Kaoichiro to get over his sister fetish. Teo struggles with the decision, so Matsumi steps in and says she can't marry Teo because he has just lost his family and is still struggling to bring his life back on track. She feels that casually asking Teo to join their family will be cruel to him. Futaba apologizes for being insensitive, and they prepare to take care of the situation. When Kaoichiro casually complains about being left out, everybody gets on edge as no one sensed his arrival. Futaba warns Kaoichiro to stay away from Teo, but Kaoichiro declares war and says he won't back off until Teo is proven innocent. Futaba has had enough, and she takes Kaoichiro by his tie and swings him like a lasso before smashing him on the couch. Nanao and Shinzo gang up on Kaoichiro, but Kaoichiro is just too powerful and with a smile he says he doesn't have time, so he'll play with them some other time. In no time he wards off their attacks and asks them to hand over Teo, threatening to tear down the house using his razor-sharp thread-like weapon, Steel Spider. While Kengo takes Teo and Matsumi to safety, Futaba attacks Kaoichiro with her wind attack, but Kaoichiro has her tied in his Steel Spider before she realizes it. Next, Shion tries to stall Kaoichiro using gaming attacks and flying orbs that start shooting at Kaoichiro. Meanwhile, Kengo and Matsumi take Teo to a hidden chamber and Kengo takes off his jacket. Before closing the door, Matsumi smiles and assures him that she will not go anywhere. Kaoichiro soon arrives and sees right through Matsumi's disguise, reminding her she still needs to work on her technique. Teo sees everything from his hidden chamber feeling helpless. Matsumi tries to talk Kaoichiro into giving up his bloodthirst, to which Kaoichiro agrees and promises not to do anything to Teo but in exchange, he wants Matsumi to stay in the house to avoid attracting any more trouble. He also forbids her from using the internet, returning to school, seeing her friends, and romance. He wants to take all the fun out of her life and make her miserable in the name of protection. Kaoichiro walks closer to hug Matsumi, and even as the blade she's holding pierces his flesh he doesn't flinch. Matsumi has no choice but to agree, and as soon as she does, Teo comes out of the chamber and demands that Kaoichiro let Matsumi go, but Kaoichiro just ignores him. Teo understands Kaoichiro must also be afraid to lose the person he loves, but he is also aware that it shouldn't lead to the person he loves fearing him the most, so he offers Matsumi to go ahead with the first plan Futaba gave them. He feels he can embrace it, as Matsumi promised she won't go anywhere, which gives him the confidence to trust again. Matsumi agrees and detaches the upper band from her ring to throw it to Teo, but before he can catch it, Kaoichiro uses his threads to prevent it from reaching Teo. 
But Teo breaks free from the steel threads and grabs the ring, even though it cuts his hand in several places because he realizes it is time for him to pay back his best friend, who has always protected a hopeless wreck like him. So from now on, he promises to protect Matsumi as he wears the bloodied ring and calls Kaoichiro bro, Matsumi runs to hug Teo, and the siblings arrive right on time to cheer their union. Futaba marks a dumbfounded Kaoichiro because now it has come down to him to teach Teo what it means to protect Matsumi. That brings the episode to an end. Thanks for watching. Want next part? Subscribe the channel and turn on notification bell.